In this episode, we are going to talk about the PN junction. The PN junction, the positive and the negative junction. So, this PN junction forms the basis of what? Diodes, and it is more applicable in semiconductors. So, we are going to explain how it came about, the importance of having the PN junction, and what to do with this. PN junction in this episode. So here, when you take a block of silicon, remember in order to create the P-type semiconductor and the N-type semiconductor, we considered a silicon atom, right, which is in its intrinsic state. That is its pure state. Then we dope it with either a trivalent impurity and if we want the n-type we also dope it with what a pentavalent impurity so for a single silicon where we are doping half of the silicon with trivalent and doping the other half with pentavalent please pay attention this is the basic of how the pn junction is formed so this is one single silicon which is having four electrons in its valence what shell. I'm going to divide it into two. This is still the same silicon atom. Then I'll dope half of it with what? Pentavalent impurity. So if I dope half the first part with the pentavalent, what are we expecting? We are going to get an N-type semiconductor because here there are going to be more electrons are we good then if i do the other half with what a trivalent impurity then we are also going to get more holes than the electrons so this becomes a negative part this becomes a positive part for the same silicon atom are we good now for the same silicon atom if half of it is negative and half of it is positive meaning there's going to be a junction a meeting point for both the positive and the negative so this junction is what we are calling as the positive and negative junction so in simple terms the p representing the positive the n representing the negative junction are we good very simple. So when you look at the diagram over here, is this part one and this is part two. The part one is representing the positive side. So you can see that there are more holes, the white ones, they are the holes. There are more holes as compared to the electrons. So it's positive dominating. Are we good? The same, if you look at the second part, there are more of the electrons, the negative parts. So they are dominating giving us the negative signal or the negative part of the same single silicon are we good and you can see that there's a yellow part which shows us the meeting point of the positive and the negative giving us a junction are we good so it's very simple so this junction forms the basis of diodes it is very important. It is going to help us to achieve something very important. And we are going to explain all that. So now that this PN junction is formed, what do we do? Or what's the essence? What happens after we get this junction, the meeting point of the positive and the negative side? So there's what we call formation of depletion region. Now we know that. For the same part, for the same silicon atom, we are getting, let me bring the positive ones here. Part is positive. So there, there are some negatives inside, but the positive is what? Dominating, right? All right, so this part is also going to be more of the negative, more of the negatives as compared to the positives. So this is it. So here, 
what we are going to see is that there is a positive part over here and there is going to be a negative part over here what do we know we know that positive and negative they are two different word charges so if they meet there's going to be some form of attraction between them is that right yes so the negative are the parts b and the positive are the part a are going to attract each other so positives will try to move in this direction more because they are seeing more of what the online charges while the negative are not necessarily moving but remember if a positive is moving it should be replaced by the negative so there's going to be a net movement of positive a net movement of what negative and if there are 50 positives here and there are say 45 negatives here and now positives are moved some of the positives close to the junction that's the pn junction they are trying to move into the negative part the amount of positive here is going to reduce right yes it is going to reduce to let's say 45 and the electrons which are trying to move to the opposite direction they are also going to reduce in number to let's say 40 so this brings the idea of a depletion region so at the part where there is a net movement at the surface there's going to be a depletion meaning their number is going to decrease is it clear their number is going to decrease and this is as a result of moving into the opposite side so when you take a, a silicon you dope half with positive dope half with the negative they are going to try and exchange the charges at the junction which is going to cause a depletion region meaning this part is supposed to be positive but it will be more of negative as compared to the positive at this region and this side is also negative but when you come closer to the junction it is going to have more of positives as compared to the negative because of the exchange happening so when we look at this image here we can see that that at uh, this this is the yellow one represent the junction original junction after the doping but it can be seen that this place is supposed to be all positives this place is supposed to be all negatives but what do we see there has been an exchange where the positive is moving to the negative and have occupied their spaces and the negatives have also occupied the positive spaces meaning at this region there is a depletion of the positive and at this region there is a depletion of the negative so these two opposite depletion is what we are calling as the depletion region i hope it's clear all right so this depletion region is also having its own analysis so the depletion region is coming as a result of what the pn junction right so now that we have the depletion region across the pn junction what is it important what is it going to cause in this semiconductor so let's explain further there's going to be what we call the barrier potential barrier potential so we know that anytime there is a positive charge and a negative charge near each other there is a force right as described by coulomb there's a force of attraction between charges are we good so the potential difference of the electric field across the depletion region is the amount of voltage required to move an electron through that electric field let me make it more practical now look at this this is our silicon initially this is the pn junction right this is the p this is the n now there's a depletion region form all here negative negative this is positive 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 so this whole is the depletion so there's still positives and some negatives inside but so there's still some negative and some positives inside like this now according to columns since this two 
A and B are opposite charges, there's going to be some field, some electric field created. So at a point, someone is asking, why is it that this part of the negatives are not crossing the barrier again? This means these electrons are weak to use an energy to cross the barrier. Remember, once the barrier is formed, there's an electric field that you have to overcome and you, you need a lot of energy to do that. So at a certain point, this effect, this barrier becomes equilibrium. There cannot be any further movement. No electron can move again. No positive is moving again. It becomes what equilibrium. And that equilibrium state creates an electric field for electrons to overcome. And that is what we are calling as the barrier potential. Remember, potential in electric electricity, we are referring to some form of voltage that we have to apply. Are we good? So here, what we are saying is that the barrier potential is 0 0.7 volt for silicon and 0 0.3 volt for germanium at a regular temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. So on the normal, this is still our silicon. So after this barrier is formed, any other electron that needs to cross this silicon barrier needs to break that potential. We need an energy produced by more or equal to 0 0.7 volt watt electric source or voltage source. Very good. Other than that, if you are being powered by 0 0.6 volt, the electron will still not have the energy, the amount of energy to cross the barrier. Very simple. Once these electrons move the exchange positions, they begin, they begin to what? Create a resistance. You are not crossing again, you are not coming. So if you want to come, then you will need an energy to overcome that resistance they are creating. And that for silicon, we are saying is 0 0.7 volts. It's constant. Are you okay? So offhead, if you are asked what is the barrier potential for silicon that is 0 0.7 and for germanium is 0 0.3 volts are we okay so with this idea of barrier potential it is also going to help us to analyze the diode very well so in our next episode we are going to look at how this barrier potential is going to affect our diode and how we are going to make use of that thank you for watching this episode Please subscribe to the channel and see you in the next episode.